If you want to get into the Unify ecosystem, but you don't want to get rid of your existing Wi-Fi router, maybe it's really good, or maybe you just want to expand your Unify network with a non-Unify Wi-Fi router, then this video is for you. I'll show you how to configure your existing Wi-Fi router as a wireless access point and add it to your Unify network. My name is Bogdan Schperny, founder of Apex One Tech. All my content is free to you. All I ask is that you subscribe and smash the like button. Okay, let me show you an overview of what we'll go over. So in my example, you know, we're using an existing uh, Netgear Nighthawk R7000. And let's say, right, this is the basic setup. You might have a modem, something like this. this is a cable modem connected to your router, WAN port, and it's also giving you your Wi-Fi signal. Okay, so that's great, but now you know you bought a Unify gateway, maybe the UCG Ultra, it doesn't have a wireless access point, or you bought the UX, the small Unify Express, which does have a wireless access point, but maybe your existing wireless router is better, stronger signal, things like that, and you want to use that one. So you would be doing something like this, right? So you still have your existing modem, whether it's from your ISP or just yours, and in this example, I have here the Unify Express, the UX, but it can be any other Unify gateway. And in this example, the Wi-Fi is turned on on the UX, but again, it doesn't have to be. This could be the Ultra. So you have this plugged in to the WAN ports, your modem. And what we're going to do here is add in our existing router, so there's just the back of it, our non-Unify wireless router connected to the LAN port of our Unify gateway. Okay, so that goes to the WAN port of your existing router. Okay, so that's kind of the first step. And again, you might want to do this, let's say this is the Ultra, and so it doesn't have a wireless access point, and you don't want to buy a Unify access point, you know, you could just have it beaming off of your existing router. Okay, so that's one scenario. Or maybe, you know, you can have both of them enabled, and this is just for like your other devices, something like that, or in some other section of the house, uh, you can do that. Or you can also even turn off the wireless access point on your existing router. And that was basically a switch. Okay, so those are kind of your scenarios. And here, right, I'm using the R7000 from Netgear. So the steps will be almost like for any Netgear device. And, you know, it'll work for other brands as well. And then I'll also show you at the end of the video kind of what the limitations are when you set up a wireless access point on your non Unify router. And I do want to point out that if you're looking to do the opposite thing in a sense. You want to add, so this is a Unify access point to your non-Unify network. Okay, so that's not this video. Uh, I'll have a link if you do want to do this up on the screen or in the video description. But let's get on with the setup. Now, step one, like I mentioned, you're connecting from the LAN port of your Unify gateway, right? You already have all that set up, first of all, whether or not it has Wi-Fi. And you're connecting that with the Ethernet port to the WAN port on your existing router. Right, so you obviously unplug this right from your modem. So you connect it like this, and if you already had the same Wi-Fi signal on it, you know you don't need to change it. Your computer should connect to it. Otherwise, you need to use an Ethernet cable, right? And you can plug in directly to your computer if you need to. But essentially, we need to get access to your existing router. Now that we are on the network, you want to get the IP address of your router. So if you go to unify.ui.com, right, that's how you can access your Unify network, see what's connected. Also, you can do that on your phone, of course. So you can see in topology, you can see in client devices. So here I have my router, for example, and I just want to grab the IP address and we'll go ahead and you just type in the IP address into your browser. And if you're on Netgear, for example, it should pop up that similar login that you've seen before. So for most routers, the username is typically admin. The password, if you didn't change it, will be typically on your Wi-Fi router somewhere. Or you can Google for your brand name what the default password is if you did not change that. So go ahead and enter that in. And now in settings, go to advanced, advanced setup. And you want to find, you know, if you have a different brand router, you want to find the setting for router, AP, bridge mode, something like that. So we'll go ahead and click here, then click on AP mode. It's giving you a reminder of what your SSIDs are, uh, so your Wi-Fi name and password. So most likely, right, you need to set that if you already changed it on your Unify devices or something like that, you probably want it to match. Um, so when this comes back online, your devices can connect. I mean, you can also change this later, but just letting you know, now's a good time to change it if you want it to be the same. 
So AP mode, and once I click apply, it should reboot. And if it doesn't, you'll maybe need to do that yourself manually. So let's click apply. Now while that's rebooting, if for some reason you could have trouble sometimes accessing your existing wireless router, when you just plug it in like that to a LAN port to another router. So if that's the case, sometimes if you have already a Unify access points on, and that's the way you're connected, sometimes you have to turn them off for it to work because they just might be confused. Otherwise, you know, just try to connect to it directly via Ethernet port if you're also having issues. Okay, so after the reboot of your router, you should be able to reconnect back to the Wi-Fi if you had that set up. And if you didn't, right, you're connected via the Ethernet port. So I'm connected with Wi-Fi. So I just type in the IP address. And on that, your most likely router login.net won't work. It might. You can try that. And if this is showing the wrong router now. Anyways, and if you don't not sure what the IP address is, maybe it changed, just go back to unify.ui.com, find your device, find the IP address, and just type it right in. So we'll go ahead and log in with the same credentials you had. So now we see here, right, it says operation mode, access points. If we go to wireless, we can see, we can change our wireless settings here, radio settings if we need to. So all the regular Wi-Fi settings for your router essentially exists here. The other thing, so now to control the devices that are attached, you won't have much control in Unify and we'll look at that later. But here we should see everything, right? So everything that's even wired is showing up here. So for example, this Raspberry Pi is wired to the LAN port of this existing router and it all works, it shows up. But you'll also notice, so for example, like this right here, 1.1. So this is running the UCG Ultra, a unified gateway. And it's even showing the gateway here as well. Okay, so, you know, maybe your router has some settings here, like I can control this plug, for example. N not much here, maybe change the name, whatever. Stuff like that. So you, you would have some settings here. So here in advanced setup, I see some, I mean, you can make, so you can go back here again. If for some reason this one didn't work out for you, you can go back to router mode and apply that if you need to. Okay, so back to the way it was. Uh, but we don't need to do that. So here in setup, you know, I can click on wireless setup, turn it off if I need to, add a guest network. All right, so now in the Unify network, okay, so if we go to unify.ui.com, so there's obviously some limitations here. So first of all, you'll notice in topology, I do have everything turned on to show, but you'll notice there's no Unify access point here. So all the devices Typically, they will show up as wired for you, okay? So it does show the router here, and you can't really see what's connected to here. There's not much control. You can just rename this device. But for example, this Raspberry Pi is actually connected to this router, but it, it can't show that. And I actually did have previously a Unify access point on here. So all the clients, for me, they, they show up right now as Wi-Fi devices, but again, that's because I had a Unify device on here already. But if I didn't, they'll actually just say that they are connected as though they're wired, which they're not, right? So you can't do much here. So essentially all kind of your controls, I mean, it looks like you can fix the IP address here, but everything else is then now in your existing router settings. Just some control that you can do here. This is not even accurate here, okay? This Wi-Fi speed limit, that's not true. Okay, so just once you point that out, my Unify gateway here just has some old information and didn't update yet to realize that all of these are not actually Wi-Fi devices in the Unify network, okay? They're all attached to this Negia router as though they're wired connections, even though they're not. Now, what we can do here, so for your Unify gateway, for example, we, we could go, right, we have the router connected to it directly, it could have been connected to the switch, that would work too, but you do have some control of like what network goes to that router, for example, so if we go actually to the ports, port manager here. So we see the router right here. So there is some control here. Okay, obviously you can disable it. But let's say maybe you're running this router just for your smart home devices. So you can select, I don't have anything else in here right now, but you can select a unique network for that. Some VLAN options. And that's mostly a support isolation if you need to do that. Uh, maybe like a guest network, you can do that as well here. Okay, and if I go to my Unify devices, I just want to show you. So you see I did have a wireless access point here before. And also 
other things that connect via Unify's mesh network. So like the USB strip. So now if you're only using your existing router as a wireless access point, you won't be able to add devices like this, for example. So you'll see that's offline. Now I'll bring this uh, access point back online and you'll see that you can actually have both going, okay, Unify and non-Unify access points. All right, so this access point is now back online, right? There it is. Zero clients. Okay, so one thing to point out, right, is that, I mean, first of all, if you're broadcasting 2.4 and 5 gigahertz on the same access point, you obviously don't want this one right next to you or your existing router. Okay, you want to separate them, unless you're separating the radios out or something like that. So something to keep in mind, you definitely don't want to conflict in that way. Let me know if this was helpful to you. And if you learned something new, please hit the thumbs up button. And if there's some tips you can give us, maybe you set this up with a different router, like a TP-Link or something, and there's some different settings, please let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Take care.